Hey folks, welcome to Fiddlehead Fiddle Lessons. Good to have you here. So one of my students online, Fiddlehead Sue asked, how do I keep up with people in a jam session? She's started playing in the new group, but they play a lot faster than her. She doesn't want to ask them to slow down. And so how, what can she do to play faster and keep up? So I'm just gonna throw out some suggestions and I hope it's useful to you. So first off, I would say as much as possible, prepare. So if you can find out what tunes they play in advance, practice those tunes. And if it's something where it's always different, then you kind of have to wing it. So one thing that'll help you with winging it is to bring your electronic cellular telephone that's smart to the session and record it. Record every song, maybe do separate recordings for each song and title them. Make sure you put a title in and maybe say the name of the title and the scale or the key into there so they can help you learn the tune later. Because what you're gonna do is you have a whole bunch of homework ahead of you. Uh, let's look at, let's maybe just look at it as fun work instead of homework. You're gonna take the recordings home and you're gonna listen to them a ton until you, they, they start to, you start to have a mental model of those songs. And then just try to learn them. Find sheet music for them and it, it may not match up, but maybe there'll be clues in there to help you figure out those songs. Another useful tool is getting an app that slows down the recordings. I use the amazing Slow Downer. There's other ones I know. And so that way you can really get in and work on one little part, okay? So as much as possible, prepare. Ask those people in the session, you know, about the titles. Get as much help from them as you can. You're sincere, you, wanna, you really wanna be a contributing member. So most people I think will want, will respond to that and will help you with that. So another thing you can do is to just work on your speed playing and, and just your ability to play faster. And so you could do that with a metronome. I'm not gonna talk too much about that here because I've done a bunch of lessons with that fairly recently, but just be able to play with a metronome and kind of push your limits on a few things, maybe on a scale and maybe on a tune. So another big idea that's kind of like maybe dodging the question, but is to kind of find people maybe within that group you're in who want to get together one-on-one -on -one or in smaller groups who are into the idea of playing it slower. There may be other people there who either are having the same problem as you or maybe they just want to help out and they'll get together with you for an hour or two and just play very slowly with you and help you work through the tunes. You know, it might be worth asking. So, and then if you don't find anybody there, there are slow player groups. They might not be one in your area. Maybe consider starting one. Just see who's out there. Go, go on Facebook or Craigslist and see about starting a slow players group. So see what other suggestions I have. Oh, I have one other maybe a couple other ideas. So here's an idea, play what you can in the song. So when I first started learning Irish music, I didn't know, people would just start playing songs and I didn't have, I didn't, you know, know what they were yet. And so what I would do is they would be playing along and I would just pick up little bits. And I'd be, every time it came around, I would play that bit. So the tip is play what you can. So let's say you're playing Swallowtail Jig and you get like the, this little bit. But then you don't have the rest yet. But then you come in when you know you got the part. And maybe the part you come in with is just a few notes. Hopefully that makes sense. You know, you but what you're doing is you're you're kind of finding anchor points in the song. And even if it's just one little thing you can do every time it comes around, it's great because you'll start to have like a mental representation of the tune. And then once you have those anchor points, you can start to fill in the gaps in your own practice. So another idea is that you probably would, a lot of the stuff you'd probably just naturally do, 
but to play softly while you're figuring stuff out. You know, if, if I'm playing like really quiet while other p people are playing, I can kind of hear what I'm doing, but they can't hear me. And so I don't mess other people up. Does that make sense? Okay. And then finally, um, oh yeah, two more ideas. One was suggested by uh, another student. Um, I, this was from an office hours session I gave. And Fiddlehead Liana had a good idea to just play chords or single notes for the piece. So um, if you know, if you can find out the key in advance, you know it's like in D or something, you can just play, start to figure out the chords. And you can just play some simple chords with long notes or... But if you can figure out a handful of chords like, you know, G, D, A, C major, maybe E, A, and D minor, maybe a few others, maybe F major too. You can fit, fit, learn a handful of chords and you can play them on your instrument, then you could really start to figure out what little parts you could do, like simple things you could do with people. You just have the key. If it's in a really weird key, you might be out of luck, but you might, it might help to do that. So yeah, you may want to, a lot of it, a lot of it, what will help you is just communicating with people too. Like, okay, this is a song, I don't know, it. Wait, can you tell me the key? And then, then you could, even if you know one chord from it, it's in D or something, you can just, just kind of quietly play D and start to kind of experiment to see what your chord progression is. Then go home and practice it. Go home and figure that out. You know, once you, you play it once, then go and figure it out. So one last big point. So you 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 go to us. It's an iterative process. We're gonna can, you're gonna continue to get better at this by keep going back. So the process is you go, you play, you show up to a session. You can't really do everything. You can't keep up, you, or you don't know what to do. But you come away with some recordings, some ideas, and you go practice those, and you come back to the session. And when you come back to the session, and people ask you if you want to play something, pick something that, that you did last time, right? You know, work, choose to work on the things you were, you know, to ask to play something you've had a chance to work on. And then everybody, there's going to be other people there who know the tune because you played it there last time. Does that make sense? So every time you come back, you know, you can have a new tune that you tried, that you've worked on from the session. And you'd be like, even if nobody on their own requested whatever tune, Swallowtail Jig, you can be like, hey, can we do Swallowtail Jig? and I'm gonna lead it, is it all right if I play it a little slower, and then we could go faster after me or something. You know, just start to meet people halfway in your group. But if you're going home and you're doing the work, I think they'll welcome you even if they're at a higher level. So they probably won't wanna play slowly the entire time, but maybe a little bit of the time. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. I feel like maybe there's a lot more that I could go into and then I probably will talk about in the future, but this is just sort of a rambling answer to Fiddlehead Sue's question. Hopefully it's helpful, Sue. Hopefully it's helpful to a few others of you out there. Let me know if you have follow-up comments. Okay, thanks for watching Fiddlehead. So long. Go to fiddlehead.com for a progressive step-by-step -step course outline, color-coded tabs, play-along tracks, sheet music, and much more. Thanks for Excellent. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.